All right, what you're about to watch is an excerpt of a sermon that I did for the church at Ohatchee Church of Christ, and it was recorded here. Uh, this is a small portion of that sermon, which I thought may be relevant to you. You may find interesting. Um, but if you'd like to see the greater sermon as a whole, it is also on the channel. And that description of what sermon it'll be will be in the description below. Thanks. And then secondly, the reason you're told to be patient. Be patient because uh, fruit is coming, and be patient because the Lord is at the gate. Be patient because the Lord is at the gate. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. What does the Lord being at the gate have to do with our being patient? Because, because the biblical message from beginning to end is that the Lord is near. The Lord is near. And his return, by extension, is near. He is not a God who is far off, who is making his way back toward the earth on some long journey so that he can return with his trumpet. He is a God that now, at this moment, sits, Christ sits upon a white horse outside of the gate of our existence, outside of the gate of our universe with angels at his side, with trumpets in hand, and with a sword in his, as he sits upon the white horse, he sits outside of that gate and at any moment can burst through with angels sounding trumpets and his sword in hand for justice. At any moment he can burst through the gate. He is a God that is near, that is at the door. And since he is so near, you need not seek out vengeance on those that harm you. You need not seek out vengeance on those who are unjust to you. You need not worry why the wicked prosper. He is the one who will rightly and exactly make all things right and delve out perfect justice. These people James writes to are being wronged, are being treated unfairly, are suffering while the wicked prosper, and he says, just wait. The Lord is near. Romans chapter 12, we have a similar line of thought. It says, verse 14, Bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who re rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil and give thought to do what's honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it's written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. You don't have to seek out vengeance. You don't have to make sure everything is done right, because the Lord will do that. The Lord is the one who takes vengeance. The Lord is the one who rights the wrongs. The Lord is near, so you can be patient. You can be patient with the wrongdoer. You can be patient with injustice. You can, be pa you can be patient with your hardships. The Lord is near. Imagine imagine at the Red Sea, as Moses has led his people across the Red Sea, and they see now that Pharaoh, as the last Israelites are coming across the water, Pharaoh is coming over the hilltop with his army of chariots, swords in hand, and coming through the water toward the people of Israel. And you don't know that the people are going to make it. You don't know that the walls of water are going to fall back in on Pharaoh like you know now. You're just watching as Pharaoh and his men are charging towards your family, towards your loved one, towards your children, and they are going to make it across. From everything you can tell, Pharaoh and his men are going to make it across the water, are going to destroy, are going to, to murder many of the Israelites and then enslave them back into his people. And you think, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. And so you begin to go back into the waters to stand in front of Pharaoh and his men to try to fight and take them on. And Moses says, no. Everything is under control. Don't go back and fight. Don't go back on your own. This battle belongs to the Lord. Be patient. Wait and see. The Lord is at hand. Philippians 4, 5 and 6. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You don't need to be anxious. The Lord is at hand. James 5, 8. He says, you also be patient. Establish your hearts. I love this language. Establish your hearts. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The idea there is, is be spiritually firm. 
when temptations come, when suffering comes, when trials come, remember what you believe. Establish your hearts in God. Remember the God that you call on. Remember the God that you believe in. That word there for establish your hearts is the same word that's used in Luke 9, 51, which we spent so much time looking at in our series on Luke last year, where it says Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. Not meaning that he physically did. He's, we've got, we're not even halfway through the book of Luke by this point. But Jesus resolutely sets out toward the cross. The same idea is here, that you establish your heart, that you set your face toward God, a heart which leaves no room for double-mindedness. There's a connection probably to be made between what we looked at last week in chapter 5, verse 5, where it talks about the fattened hearts, that we are fattening, fattening your hearts for the day of slaughter, and chapter 5, verse 8, where we fix our hearts on the Lord. The fattened heart versus the fixed heart, the heart set towards Christ. Your heart lies at the center, either aimed at self-indulgence or aimed toward Christ. There's a call here in James 5, 7 through 11 to display patience with your situation and with each other, with each other because the fruit is coming, because God's purpose will be achieved, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful, because you will be blessed, because the Lord is at the gate. We won't read the whole chapter, but look at Psalm chapter 37. We'll close with this. Psalm chapter 37, which is a passage that is probably in James' mind as he writes. He says, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Be patient, church. Fruit is coming. The Lord is at the gate. May we live lives honoring that reality. Love you, church. Talk to you soon.